We are in the series of the Lord's Prayer, and now we come with the next sentence of this prayer. Give us today our daily bread. Give us today our daily bread. I pray that, I hope that this message can help you, feed you spiritually, and also challenge you to pray more in the way that God wants us to pray. Um, as we live daily in our life, we sometimes take for granted things that we have. We take for granted the earth of the air that we breathe. We take for granted the water. We take for granted also the sun that comes every morning to our windows to wake up, to wake us up for a new day. Uh, as I uh, also leading you in this series, I have a questionnaire that is the bulletin. Everybody have a bulletin, Chubo uh, So you can look at the questions and, and answers as you listen to the sermon or after the sermons when we have a discussion time. So don't anyone miss this uh, discussion questions and reflection question that I wrote every week for your spiritual measuring and checking and also fellowship. Um, the last week we were talking about the petitions and we were talking about that the petition is the second big group in the three divisions that we have in the Lord's Prayer. So as we revise again what we say the last prayer, so the Lord's Prayer is divided in three P's, praise, petitions, and praise. Praise, as we say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. And then the petitions that started with, let your kingdom come and let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we finish with praise, as we say, for yours the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now these three P's are the three parts of the Lord's Prayer. And are the greatest, the great divisions that we have in this a prayer that the Lord teaches today. Now the question is, <clears throat> shall we ask God for personal sins? Shall we ask God for sins that we need? Is it not selfish to pray to God for our needs? Because after we listen to the, the last message that we should pray or we must pray for God's kingdom, First, and we must pray for his will be done on earth as it is in heaven probably we think that then we have no room for our petitions we have no room for our requests personal requests but the answer is yes God wants you to also pray for your personal requests and I started praying in the secret place in your room when God who sees you in secret can reward you in public and he wants you to pray. He wants you to ask. Because that's what the, 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 the Lord's Prayer is. Is the, is the re, re, reply or the response of the petition of the, the, the disciples. Teach us to pray. And then the Lord teaches the disciples to pray like this. Give us today our daily bread. Now, he will, the Lord's Prayer will introduce us about the, the, the life of prayer for the disciples. And in the rest of the, the, the Sermon on the Mount, the Lord will continue talking about prayer. He will continue talking about prayer as he said that, yes, you will learn the golden rule of prayer. And the golden rule of prayer is, is coming in the chapter 7, verse 7 to 8, when he say, yes, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. And knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives, who, he who finds, uh, who he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, the door will be opened. So, ask, seek, and knock are the golden rules of prayer. And we will talk about later what's how he ended chapter 6 of the book of Matthew. And the point is here, shall we ask? Yes, definitely, we must ask. 
we must ask to the Holy Spirit to help us to pray we must ask also to God to supply our needs and we must ask for our daily needs as well one war report said that people who start to debt each year are raising to 11 million and over will USA adults 34 million and money Americans spend eating out of uh, 52 billion since 1980 then 236 billion in 1990 and US expenditures for overseas food aid uh, in 1980 reached to 1.4 billion and in 1990 1.6 billion also the average of calories consumed daily in North America is 3,500 and in Africans 2,100 and people who are continually hungry these days in this 21st century in Ethiopia reached the 20% Sudan 20% Mozambique 30 and 40 percent and American adults currently on diets are risen to 90 percent now with this study this is what we think we think that even today with all the technology that we have with all the, the, the increases of science that we have people are still hungry people are still looking for bread and and what is the problem that we, with all the technology and all the resources that we have in the world, we cannot feed the hunger. We cannot provide for those who are in need, physical needs. What is the problem? The problem is no in technology. The problem is no lack of resources. The problem is the heart. The heart of people who have abundance, who have resources a lot, they don't want to share they don't want to give away they don't want to supply for those who are in need they want to accumulate more and more and more and be independent of what other people's needs are and be selfish in their own needs even though they don't have needs but they think that they can provide their own needs and they work hard or they are investing their energy that time their resources to get more of what they need or more than they need that's the problem today in the world the problem is not lacking of resources the problem is not lacking of, of, of food the problem is of lacking of people who wants to share this food now the same thing or the same problem happens in churches too let me illustrate in this way I, I already told you two years ago this, this illustration. There were, a, 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 in South America, there were a, a bakery. When uh, one day, one person once went to find this bakery bread for his daily breakfast. Now, when he, he get to that uh, bakery, he found this slogan and said, Bakery for you every day. We are baking for you every day. Now with that slogan, definitely you have the confidence that yes, you will go and find bread in that bakery. But as soon as the per the, this client entered into this bakery, he saw that all the baskets were empty. And he met the owner and said, okay, I come here looking for bread. It's all or sold out. And he said, no, they are not all sold out. But before I, I, I tell you where are the bread, then let me explain you about how we started this bakery. And he started to talk about that his grandfather gave it, this bakery to him, and this bakery had passed to his father, and this his father also, after he passed away, he gave it the ownership of this bakery. And he continued with this bakery for generations. He also said about the, the recipes that they have for making bread. We have recipes for making donuts, for baking breads, French bread, American bread, and all these kind of breads that you can imagine in, in the country. But the, as soon as the, 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 the person feels uncomfortable just listening to this 
background of this bakery, he was anxious and hurried to say, okay, thank you for your information, but where's the bread and can I buy bread? And the person said, well, if you have more time, let me explain to you how this, our uh, ovens are working uh, uh, and how uh, good and modern ovens we have right now that we just uh, uh, buy uh, a few months ago for making the best bread of the world. But the person insists, yes, I, I would like to have more time to hear what you are developing your, your bakery, but where is the bread? I need the bread for my breakfast. Then the owner of this baker said, sorry, we have no bread. The same picture is happening these days in Christianity. Many Christian churches, regardless of the denomination, they are beautiful churches, monument buildings, that they have all the technology, PowerPoints, screens, uh, choirs, preachers who can preach good sermons, but there is no bread. There's no spiritual bread in their message. There's no content of the gospel in their message. There's no spiritual food in their message. They are, they, 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 it's like a baker, bakery full of clients who form a line to enter into this bakery, but they are just introducing them how great this bakery is, how long they build this bakery, and how well they are they are prepared to prepare bread or make bread. These churches are like these bakeries. They, are, they can say about the history of this church, how they were founded, how many people were congregating there in the past, and, uh, and how good resources they have, or the best curriculum for teaching the Bible, the, the, the Bible and make discipleship. But they have no disciples. They have no... Uh, message that will feed the spiritual hungry for the congregation. The congregations come every week, but they just are entertained. They just receive a message about politics, cultural themes, or things that happen in the news, but they are not receiving the word of God that will help them to grow spiritually, to become more mature Christians, to become more like Jesus actually, and to also become a disciple of Christ. Because the ultimate will of the Lord is to make more disciples in all nations and to evangelize as much as we can because the Lord's day is coming soon. These days many churches are wasting time, energy, and money just to build themselves, to make their names be great, like a famous bakery. But they have no disciples in them. And if as soon as the senior pastor retire, the congregation assistant drop, or the, the church is divided in two or three or four. What is the problem? That they have no bread in the house of the bread. Jesus said to his disciples, when you pray, you should pray like this. Give us this day our daily bread. Now, the word this day in the, in the King James Version is the same word today in the NIV Version. And, in, and this word, to this day or today, and daily bread are there in the Lord's Prayer on purpose. Now, the Lord's, was, the Lord's Prayer could say like this, give us this day bread. Or you could say like this, Give us our daily bread. But look at what the Lord's Prayer said. Give us this day or give us today our daily bread. It doesn't sound grammatically in English redundant. Yes, it is. And why it sounds redundant? Is because someone who was copying the Bible make a mistake? No. It was because the Lord wants to emphasize exactly that in your prayer, in our prayer, we have to pray today for the daily bread. Today for the daily bread. So God's intention was to call 
his children to deepen our relationship in prayer daily and to develop this dependency of God as the bitter source for living the Christian life every day in order to glorify his name and as we pray for our daily name daily needs we will glorify the names of the Lord our Father in heaven hallowed be your name this sentence will follow the rest of the Lord's prayer as we ask again give us today our daily bread we must glorify the names of the Lord now what we see here is the purpose of prayer the meaning of the Lord's prayer is finding here in this sentence uh, because when Jesus said give us today or give us this day our daily bread he wants us to recognize him as our provider now when the when man was creating in the garden of Eden they have communion with God every day God filled the earth that the earth will produce naturally all kind of resources then Adam and Eve they just have to stain their hands and eat from every fruit of the garden of Eden except for the one who God provided forbidden to eat that was the tree in the middle of the garden when Adam and Eve were enjoying the paradise they have the enjoyment of being with God together every day they didn't need to ask God for the daily bread because they have it already there and God commanded to take it as much as they wanted they freely can enjoy all the fruits of the garden but then later when they fall into temptation Adam and Eve they were cast away from the garden of Eden they could not reach again even this middle tree uh, the, the tree in the middle of the garden and the tree who was next to them that was a tree of life that they could reach for eternal life so after the fall the men have to war for their own daily bread and as the course was by the sweet of their head for we have to eat every day so it was for Adam and Eve to find their daily bread every day with the strength that God will provide every day then what God after the fall showed to the man in a new way of relationship was dependency he wanted that Adam now from his own sake to come to God and ask for food again after he was banished from the garden again of Eden Adam should go in prayer every day for supply why because he is out of resources now he's in a wild war now and he doesn't know where to get for his provision for himself and for his family then generations after generations they should learn how to depend on God's provision Abraham when he was te tested in his faith he recognized God as his provider and God showed for the first time in history the meaning of his name and he introduced himself or he revealed himself to Abraham as God who provides Jehovah Jireh we read in Genesis 22 14 that and Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide as it says to this day in the mount of the Lord he shall be provided so while the Lord's prayer is teaching us to glorify God's name to hallow God's name to sanctify God's name as we come every day asking for our needs second the purpose of this prayer give us today our daily bread is to recognize that God is the one who gives us every day everything that we need in the book of Exodus he was called it the bread from heaven the manna and the word manna or man, manna means what is it or what it is and the scripture said that in Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 3 that God 
humble the people of Israel. He said, so he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and feed you with manna which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that men shall not live by bread alone, but men live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Now the people of Israel, from the, for the first time after they were delivered from, Exod, from the people of Egypt, they were free to worship God, but the first thing that they have to learn is to receive the word that come from God and the provision that come from God, the manna. And God tested and God humbled God's people by providing every day, what is it? The manna, the needs. Every day we need to receive the provision of God and recognize that it's God who provides for all our needs. It's not because we are so smart and because we have so many diplomas in our world or because we have a good daddy and good mommy who are rich and who have all the money of the world that we have everything that we have right now. If we think that all that we have right now, this clothes, this house, this, this education, this, this uh, money, it belongs be to us because we work hard for that, then we just have what we think we have. And we won't have more than that. But if we recognize it is God who provides all our needs daily and it's in His name that we us, then we are sanctifying His name and we are fulfilling the purpose of prayer. Now, it's interesting that when we pray for our daily needs, we pray not for things that we think we will need or things that we need extra. We pray exactly what we exactly need every day. There is a portion for every day. And that's why the people of Israel, they learned in the 40 years in the desert to find for the exact portion of their needs. If they have a family of two, three children, they have to collect the manna for the members of the family. They have like 18, or it's not 18, but eight or, or 12 children, then they have to collect the manna for this number of members of the, the house. No more, no less. And they have to collect twice on Friday because the Sabbath, the Saturday, will be a day when they won't find any manna on the, 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 land, the land or the ground. So they have to learn how to collect the exact quantity of manna in order to supply their needs. The author of Proverbs 30 in the Bible teaches about the daily allotted need. And he prays like this. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food allotted to me. Lest I be full and deny you and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and still and profane the name of my God. What the author of Proverbs 30 says is, when we pray, we pray for the exact portion of manna that we need every day. We pray for our needs of this day. We pray for the needs that we're going to receive this day, and of course this means that we should pray in the morning. Because when we say, give us today our daily bread, we are praying that we're going to receive this day and we're going to receive the rest of this day. And if you pray in the evening, you pray for the bread that you're going to receive in the morning. Why many people cannot sleep at night? Because they are worried that the next morning there won't be manna. There won't be bread anymore. And they, that's why they cannot sleep. And they try to work at night in order to guarantee that the next morning they will have what they need. So the, the writer says here, Lord, give me what exactly that I need to date. Because if you give me more, maybe I will deny you. Maybe I will think, oh, it's because I'm too smart. Or if you give me less, 
then I will feel that I'm poor and then I will be tempted to, to steal in order to supply what is lack. God knows exactly our needs and he wants us to pray exactly for what we need. And before we ask, God already prepared and war for, what, for our needs. So he just wants to all his children come to his presence and in dependency ask for what they need. So God with pleasure and loving hands, he will extend his provision for all of us as we are measured to use it every day. What are our needs? That's the question. What are your needs? And what are the needs that the war have? I want to summarize in, the, in, in four fields and say that we have, yes, four kind of needs that we need to feed every day. And the first one is the physiological needs. We need to ask God for our physiological needs. That's food, water, air, and sleep well. We need to ask also for our social needs or emotional needs, family, friendship, intimacy. We need to ask also for our protectional or safety needs, personal security, protection, financial security, health, well-being. And ultimately, we have to pray for our spiritual needs, forgiveness, faith, holiness. In this way, we can see the Lord's Prayer here. That the Lord's Prayer is showing us that we have to pray for our needs, daily bread. And all these needs, physiological, social, safety, or spiritual, God knows these needs that we have. He wants to meet our needs. But in order to meet our needs, He wants us to meet Him. Because without meeting Him, you, He cannot meet your needs. He will, and He's willing to meet your needs, but He wants to see you are looking for the source who provides for all our needs. He wants you to come to Him in dependency, in, 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 with a thirsty and hungry heart. That's why the Lord Jesus said, happy are those kind of people, or blessed are those who are hungry and thirsty of righteousness, because they will be fulfilled, they will be satisfied. If you are in need, spiritual, physical, social, emotional, safety or, or uh, pr protectional, God will meet your needs. He just wants to see your heart of looking for God as a, the one who provides all your needs. What are our spiritual needs? We see in the Lord's Prayer that our spiritual needs are forgiveness, God's war, and holiness. He says here in the Lord's Prayer, Forgive my debts as I forgive my debtors. So in the Lord's Prayer, we see that our spiritual, first spiritual need is bread, is provision. But then he said, we need forgiveness. You need forgiveness. I need forgiveness. And every day we have to ask God for forgiveness. Because if we sin, we have the promise that he is righteous and just, to forgive all our sins according to the Bible, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. He asked, he, he, he encouraged to us for our daily bread, that is the word of God, because it's the only source that we have to grow in faith daily. Romans chapter 10, 11, 17 says that faith comes from hearing and hearing the message of Christ. So if you need faith, you have to ask God for faith. And you have to, and when you ask God for more faith, you are asking for more God's word. In other words, you have to ask God to provide for you a Bible study, a discipleship, a fellowship, a, a, a church where you can listen God's message. 
And if you are hungry and thirsty for righteousness, then you must come to church to listen to God's word. You must come to God and you must come to the Bible every day for feeding your spiritual needs. Because your faith, is, it could be weak, you can get a disease, and you cannot have a healthy faith if you don't ask daily for your spiritual needs. Then holiness, for you is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. So this prayer teaches that our daily need is holiness. And we ask God for protection to sanctify his holy name in our life as we sanctify our body, our mind, our heart. So we can receive the power of the Holy Spirit to be his witness to the end of the world, to the end of the years. At chapter 1 verse 8. So our spiritual needs are forgiveness, God's bread or God's word, and holiness. To not fall into temptation and to be ready to glorify his kingdom and let his kingdom come. For his is the power and the kingdom and the glory forever. Philippians chapter 4, 19, the apostle Paul will say, And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. What we need to do? Just ask. Ask and God will supply your needs. The Lord Jesus or the evangelists of Matthew will finish the chapter 6 saying, starting saying that the Lord teaches to us, but he will finish his chapter saying, don't worry. After all teaching of the Lord's prayer, Matthew will lead us to remember the words of the Lord. That he said, therefore, do not worry, saying, why shall I eat? Why shall, I, why shall we drink? Why shall we wear? For after all these things, the Gentiles seek. And here, today, the con contextualization of Gentiles means the non-believers. Means the people who don't follow Christ, the non-Christians. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these sins. What these sins? What to eat, what to drink, what to wear will be added to you. Will be added to you. So don't worry. Don't worry because God is your provider. Jesus is your provider. He says in John chapter 6, 35, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry he who believes in me will never be thirsty. Jesus is the bread of heaven. Jesus is God, our provider. And in his name, God will provide all our needs. He is the bread of heaven. And when we ask to God, give us today our daily bread, we must ask to God to help us to meet Jesus every day. If you meet Jesus every day, Jesus will meet all your needs. And in his name, you will know he is your provider. He is the Lord, the ones who provide. His name is Jehovah Jireh. So we must pray every day as the Lord teaches us how to pray.